Hey, what's up guys? AirsoftMan819 back again with yet another video. Today's video is going to be the full review of the AGM MP001 Spring Action Sniper Rifle. I've owned this gun for roughly a week now. It might not seem like a week because my timing of the original teaser video, but those videos were filmed at different times, so it might not appear to be a week, but I have owned this gun for about a week. Out of breath. Ugh, I guess my breath. I don't know I'm out of breath. Anyways, I've had this gun for about a week. I've put between three and 500 rounds through it. Um, I've done a little bit of work on it, and um, I think I've formulated a pretty solid opinion on this gun. So we're going to be going into this gun in depth. Uh, we're going to be here for a few minutes. So for you guys who are in a hurry and want the short version, yes, it is a good gun. Yes, you should buy it. Yes, it is a good value for $70. That being said, there are some little annoying things about it that I'm going to talk about but they do not affect whether or not you should buy this gun. The good outweighs the bad, and it is a good gun, and I would definitely recommend picking it up. Now, for you people who enjoy good in-depth reviews on guns, um, stay tuned because we're going to talk a little bit about this gun. Now, um, what really led me to do this video was, um, when I was looking to buy this gun, I was trying to find good reviews on YouTube of the gun, and I did not find a single one. And actually, Airsoft GI made a video about this gun, and I don't consider it very good. Why? Airsoft GI reviews are extremely short, and they really don't tell the potential buyer anything about the product. Um, this is going to be a bit different. I've had years of Airsoft experience. I know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to give you guys a good review. Now, um, to get some of the basic stuff out of the way, um, the gun costs $70 at evike.com. And you can use a coupon code for free shipping so you can get this gun out the door, just the gun, shipped for 70 bucks, Which is a great deal, especially considering what you get. What you get for $70 is a VSR based rifle that's made mostly of metal, shoots a good FPS, is accurate, and it won't break after the first 10 shots. Those are all good things and it's all worth buying for 70 bucks, definitely. Um, there are a few things about it that I don't like. Um, as with any gun that is $70, you are going to sacrifice the external quality. Um, there are seams on the bottom of the stock. The stock is just cheap, cheap plastic. Uh, the trigger guard is plastic. I did not like that. Um, a solid drop on a rock or something would break this. Uh, the stock itself just isn't the best of quality. Um, the butt pad is rubber, but it's kind of weird. It kind of just pulls right off here. Um, and the stock in the back is hollow. Why they did that, I don't know, but uh, the butt plate leaves a bit to be desired. It's not very thick, but it is rubber, so I'll give them credit for making it rubber because a lot of them are plastic, so I will give them credit for making it rubber. Um, one interesting thing you could do is you could actually uh, stick maybe a small gun in here, or you could actually put some metal weights in there and uh, secure them in there to make the gun feel a little bit better uh, because the gun out of the box isn't all that heavy, especially without a scope. Um, so basically, when you buy the gun, um, it comes without a scope. It does come with the scope rail to mount a scope. It just doesn't include a scope or the rings. The scope on this gun and the rings on this gun um, are not with the gun. I actually already had these. Well, I bought the rings with the gun, but they, they didn't come together. Uh, the scope is an old uh, scope from the pellet gun I had lying around, and I figured it would be good for this cheap sniper rifle build. Um, so I'm going to show you guys exactly what you do get and also what the box looks like. So let's set the gun down real quick and grab the box. Um, E-Bike sells these uh, direct from the manufacturer, so what you'll get is actually just a plain cardboard box like this with a uh, styrofoam bottom. Get this cardboard load off. There's nothing on it, just plain cardboard. Um, you get your owner's manual. Um, most of this stuff in here is just common knowledge. Uh, you really don't need to read this unless you actually can't get the gun together because it does come disassembled, but it's very easy to put together. Um, basically, the barreled receiver will come separate from the stock, and you just drop the barrel and the receiver in the stock and screw it in with two bolts. So um, as long as you know how to screw in a bolt, you should be able to get this gun together. Um, I don't really know if there's any shingles or anything in the manual. Um, I never really read through it a whole lot, but um, it seems... Pretty decently put together, especially for something from China. Seems pretty decently put together. So, um, if you if there's something you can't figure out on your gun, you can always check the manual. Um, you get a speed loader. This is necessary for um, 
loading your magazines, uh, you just press this button and let this plunger come out, fill it full of BBs, stick it on your mag and just keep pushing this plunger down until the mag's full. Uh, most people know how to use these and it's nice that they include one. This one seems pretty solid, pretty decent quality, so uh, I would definitely hold on to it. Okay, so please do not use this. It comes with a cheap sling. Um, they might as well have just printed the word cheap right on the side of this thing because it is awful. The clips are pot metal. Um, they're not well put together. And uh, I would imagine they would hold the weight of this gun for about five minutes before they broke. So I would highly recommend leaving this in the box or throwing it away and getting yourself a good sling like this. This has steel clips on it, has a nice shoulder pad. I would recommend getting a nice sling like this if you're going to use a sling. Get yourself a cleaning rod. Um, also has the unjamming tip on the end, so if you get a BB stuck in your barrel, you can jam that in there and knock it out. It's also got the little loop for a uh, patch, so you can clean out your barrel. Um, I checked the barrel on this gun out of the box, and it was pretty clean, so I don't think you'll have to do that. But it wouldn't hurt to check the barrel anyways to make sure it's not dirty. And you get a single magazine. It only comes with one. I actually ordered two extra. I'm going to talk about this in depth a little later. You also get your Allen key to assemble the gun. Um, you could also use ones that you already have, but this one works just fine. This is actually the one I used to assemble the gun. Like I said, you just got to put in two bolts and it's together. Um, so, the first impression I had when I pulled this gun out of the box, it felt just a bit cheap. Um, it felt a little bit lightweight and um, I was not impressed with the stock material. Um, it's just, it's a rough gun. You know, it's 70 bucks. You should expect that just a little bit. Uh, the external quality leaves a little bit to be desired. And I had a couple issues with um, a couple things that I'm going to talk about now. So let's move the camera in just a little bit so we can take a look at the finer details of this gun. And then I'll give you guys my final conclusion and the accuracy results. Okay, so first let's go ahead and take a look at the controls on the AGM MP001. Uh, they're not nothing too fancy, and uh, they work pretty well. So you have a safety rear of the bolt right here. The camera focus in a little bit. Back is safe. Forward is fire. I'll test that real quick. Let's rack the bolt. Okay, the gun is cocked. It's on safe. Won't fire. Push it forward. Now it will. Safety works pretty well. Safety is made of metal. Um, before we go any further, I guess I'll just show you guys what parts are metal and what parts are not. So the bolt handle itself, the rear cocking piece, the entire black receiver here, scope rail, the entire outer barrel, sling loops. The sling loops are pretty nice. They work pretty well. No real issue with those. Got one, the rear of the stock right here. Your trigger guard unfortunately is plastic not the highest quality. The trigger itself is metal. Also all of the inner workings, uh, the cylinder here, the silver part you see, uh, that is also metal. So basically you have the safety back here to fire the gun. What you do, lift the bolt handle, retract it all the way till it locks. There is no open chamber in case you guys are wondering. And you just close it. And it's ready to fire. The gun will not fire out of battery, so if the bolt handle is up, the gun will not fire. Well, actually, I'll put it on fire real quick. The gun will not fire even when the safety is off, as long as the bolt is out of battery. You see, as soon as I close the bolt, it will fire. Okay? So last adjustment that you really need to know about is the hop-up. And that is right up front here, this little slider. Forward for less, back for more. It's a bit tight, you might have to stick a little screwdriver down there to push it, but uh, the adjustments seem to work fairly well and the hop up in this gun um, is really good, um, had really good range and accuracy out of it, so uh, no complaints there. The only complaints I really have is the fact my camera can't stay focused. Okay, so you have your mag well down here, you can see a lot of the internal parts are metal, you can see the cylinder head is brass, the entire cylinder is metal, and the chamber is metal. Uh, there's one of the bolts that you have to put in to assemble the gun. The other bolt is back here. Pretty simple. Um, 
So basically, you just take your mag, stick it in there, give it a little push to click, and to remove it, you push this button forward of the mag well right here. Push it, pull it out. Okay? The magazines hold about between 25 and 30 rounds. They're fairly simple. Just take your speed loader, load them in like that. And they're kind of transparent, so you can kind of see um, how many BBs you have left, so that helps. The magazines are not very high quality, as you can see here. My camera will focus. It often doesn't want to. It's more interested in what's in the background. Come on, focus. But this, this feed nozzle right here is just not very solid. There's two springs in there, and the plastic is really brittle, and I can see that breaking over time, if you're, especially if you're rough on it. So uh, that goes for the controls of the gun, and uh, let's bring the camera back and uh, talk a little bit more about the power, the accuracy, and the hop-up. Actually, one thing that I did forget to mention, uh, one of the quality issues I had with the gun is, as there is a bolt, a little screw, it's kind of hard to see, but it's in the back of the bolt right here, and after repeated shooting, that screw back there would loosen, and it would make the whole bolt loose, and I had to keep tightening it with the uh, Allen key that was included. So I actually had to use some thread locker, like this, to lock the bolt from backing itself out. So make sure you get some glue or some thread lock on this screw back here so it doesn't back its way out when you're shooting the gun. Okay, so it's time to talk a little bit about the reliability, the power, and the performance of this gun. Now, with my testing, the gun averaged between 400 and 450 FPS with .2 gram BBs. Although I would not recommend using .2 gram BBs in the gun because those are just simply too light. They don't fly straight. And when I was shooting these through my gun outdoors, the BBs were just going crazy and going everywhere. So I would recommend .28 gram BBs or heavier. So, Elite Force .2s, um, these are actually pretty decent BBs, but they just didn't fly very straight in the gun because it was just too powerful. So I would highly recommend spending a little bit extra money and picking up some .28s. Um, now .28s in this gun shot extremely straight. Um, even if you could pick up some .3s maybe, I know that .3s are pretty expensive and that's a little bit overkill. Uh, you really don't need anything heavier than .28s, um, but I also would not recommend using .2s in this gun. The lightest BB I would put in this gun would be a .25 and that's pushing it. So, um, the accuracy was amazing with .28s. I was able to consistently hit a man-sized target at 75 yards once I got, got the scope properly adjusted and the hop-up properly adjusted at 75 yards I was consistently hitting a man-sized target every single shot which is pretty ridiculous um, that being said um, at 75 yards the BBs aren't moving too quickly so if a guy saw the BB coming he could probably dodge it but um, it's still amazing accuracy um, the power uh, it might be a little bit too low for some of you hardcore snipers out there because I know that you guys really like your high FPS. Um, and this gun is not shooting very hot. It's shooting about, with the .28s, it's probably pushing, pushing them out there between 370 and uh, 390 feet per second, which isn't too hot, but it's still hot enough that in a decent sized woodland area, you should be able to hit someone between 60 and 75 yards. Now, um, some issues I had um, with the gun. Um, there's really none other than the fact that uh, I had that screw backing out at the back and uh, that the stock just wasn't the highest quality. Um, I did have it jam up on me once, but I think that that's magazine related because I was out in the heat and the magazines were kind of sitting out in the heat. I think the sun made them a bit pliable and uh, they didn't work quite as well. And uh, that's honestly the only really weak point about this gun are the magazines. Now the good thing about the magazines are they're extremely cheap. They only cost six bucks. I ordered two of them with my gun. And if they break, you could always buy some more. So, um, this gun is loosely based off the Tokyo Marie VSR. I say loosely because the trigger box inside is actually not compatible with all Tokyo Marie trigger box stuff. Um, the only parts that I know of that are compatible for sure are, are sears, spring sears, pistons, cylinder heads. Um, I think the uh, inner barrel is and the hop-up is. But anything else in the trigger mechanism is not going to be compatible, unfortunately. Also, I'm not sure if you can buy other brands of magazines that will work in this gun. Um, Evike was kind of pointing me to the fact that you can't. I'm not sure if you can. 
It might be better to buy some GMP mags or even some Tokyo Marine mags if you can get a hold of them. So overall, would I recommend this gun? I would say yes if you're willing to put a little bit of work into it to make it a better gun. Because out of the box, it's not perfect. It has the screw problem. Um, you might have to dial in the hop up a little bit. You obviously have to track down a scope. Um, I also have one more internal problem I want to talk to you guys about. So, there's a metal piece in here that holds the magazine. It's kind of up this way inside the stock, and it's attached to the barrel. Now, one problem I had was there were two bolts holding that to the barrel assembly. One of the bolts actually was completely fallen out and loose when I got the gun. And when I tried to screw it back in, it wouldn't stay because the bolt was not long enough. So I actually had to put a different bolt in the magazine assembly in the gun uh, to hold it securely to the barrel assembly. Now, is that something that should scare people away? No, because if you have just a little bit of ingenuity experience, you could always fix it yourself just like I did. And just to be safe, I actually put thread locker on that as well. Also, the gun did come with an ugly orange tip on it, and it was pinned in, but all you had to do is dip the barrel in some boiling water, hold it there for a few minutes, and the orange tip just popped right off. So, um, some things you might want to do to this gun to help it out, obviously to do those things that I've told you about the bolts. Also, a helpful thing to do would be to paint it, because like I said, this black stock is ugly as hell, and a good sand job and a good paint job could probably do a lot for it. Also... You can always put another spring in it to make it just a little bit more powerful. Um, I am going to do a shooting test of this gun. Um, when exactly? I don't know. Probably when the weather permits and I have time. Um, and one more thing before I go, because I know some of you kids out there are going to wonder, how hard is it to pull the bolt? Actually, it's fairly easy with that 400 FPS spring in there, so I'll demonstrate real quick. Bolt throws extremely smooth, doesn't hang up, doesn't make any weird noises, and functions as it should. Hope you guys enjoyed this review, and stay tuned for the shooting test.